Let's do it. <clears throat> As promised, ladies and gentlemen, from Rocky Mountain Pro, he is larger than life. It's Jumbo Zamore. Oh, never How gets we, old hearing your own name. <laughs> how's it going this morning, my man? Uh, doing all right, you know. Um, <clears throat> obviously, uh, coming off of a rough match, but I'm here. I'm still trucking, still going forward. That's great to hear. As, as he's talking about coming off of Shocktober just last month, little tough match. We won't have to dive into that, my man. What we're going to dive in today here on the meat segment, E's and B's, we're going to learn a little bit about yourself, my bud. And then also we're going to catch up on a few silly things. So are you ready to do this today, man? I'm ready, man. Lay it on me. All right, Jumbo. <clears throat> Let my fans know a little bit about yourself and how did you get your start in wrestling? Well, uh, I've always been a fan of wrestling. It's something that's always called to me um, throughout my life. It was uh, growing up, I, I, being such a fan, I, I still had a disconnect as far as could I do this? Uh, how do you even go about doing this? How does one go from, you know, uh, watching it on TV, I guess, to, to, to being in the ring? There was a lot of disconnect there, so I, I kind of brushed it off for a long time. And then uh, finally, it was just uh, too much. It was I, I, every time I tuned into Raw or any program Impact, uh, I, there was just too much to be to watch them and not be there myself. Uh, so I, I did all the research I could. Ended up finding uh, Rocky Mountain Pro, and uh, the rest is history. I called I called up Matt Yaden. I got my tryout. And I've uh, been involved ever since that. That was uh, my tryout was in uh, 2018. So 2018, right on. So fairly new, as you know, here on Ease and Bees, Jumbo, we've had several of your guy, of your, uh, your co-workers, we might call them, or the other talent there at Rocky Mountain. And, and they all are fairly young. And that's what I love about this is, like I said, I've talked to you earlier before we started. You know, I like pushing you guys because we start somewhere. And a lot of times the the – unknown from you guys is what is not shined the light on enough and that's why we're having you on today so that's an awesome start man just like many probably sit there right now today on the couch and wish or wonder you know can i make it well you're one of the ones that's obviously put your heart into it and you know are on the right path you know i've seen much work from you here recently and been very impressed been pushing you a lot here seeing you on some of the rewind stuff they do on twitch at rocky mountain pro but, you know, to get a little bit of off wrestling topic here, Jumbo, I want to know one thing. One thing I ask everybody that comes on, E's and B's, everybody. What is your favorite breakfast item? Oh, man. My favorite breakfast item um, has always just been the breakfast burrito. You the know, breakfast like, traditional? It's, yeah, it's quick. It's a quick, it's got everything you need in your breakfast. You know, your egg, sausage, ham, whatever you want to throw in there, all wrapped up in a portable, uh, you know, handheld uh, edible device. So, like, that's my thing. I'm all about gotcha. uh, being – foods that are mobile. Easy right on. I, I definitely understand. <laughs> and here's a silly fact. Uh, you know, I'm from Indiana. been living in Colorado since about 2007. But uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I didn't eat breakfast burritos in Indiana until I come, came to Colorado, and especially green chili. I didn't know what I was missing. Yeah, and, oh, wow, yeah. and I still try to explain that now to my friends out east, like they're missing out on the green chili with the breakfast burritos. It's just so good, good, uh, good selection, my friend. Yeah. So hey, let me let me ask you, what was your uh, favorite childhood wrestler? Uh, my favorite childhood wrestler. It, it's really hard to pinpoint, but the one that resume, uh, resonates with me the most has always been Mankind. Um, yeah. But I, it's kind of like a tie between Mankind and Kane, only because. Uh, when I first saw them, for, you know, when I when I laid eyes on them for the first time, it was um, it, it just drew me in. I, I I thought to myself, could there be people like this in real life? <laughs> you know, like, Definitely, it, it, yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah. It, and it just made me uh, really uh, get sucked into to the world of uh, professional wrestling that much more. Uh, it, 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 there were characters that were just outside the norm of what we expect to see when we go outside and and but at the same time it was still an extension of the people you see outside it was like an extreme version of it so um as a as a kid when i first uh, seen it it 
I, I, it resonated with me so much. I, I got, I, I got hooked, but I didn't really quite think about why until much later in life. But it was definitely because there were just these greater, you know, as I like to say, larger than life, larger yeah. than life characters that that you know really resonated with me as a kid. Absolutely, I agree, and, and I love that part of wrestling. It's the selling part too, a part of it too that, that you know, like you said, it drew you in to make you think a little bit, like, you know, is this real? Is this is there somebody? I've seen somebody like that. Does it really happen? Uh, staying kind of close to that topic, Jumbo. You know, this this month of November will be 30 years for The Undertaker. You know, they're promoting it on WWE Network, of course. But what's your first memory of him? Well, my first memory um, of him was when, you know, when Kane debuted, basically. <laughs> that, okay. that was around the time I started watching wrestling. Gotcha. My cousins got me into it. Um, I uh, Kane, um, when I seen Kane come out and go after his brother, that's the first time really I've seen The Undertaker. Uh, but I also fell in love with The Undertaker, the, you know, his character as well. So I started looking more into his history uh, after that. But definitely The Hell in a Cell was the first time I, I've seen him. I got you. And just a little bit of tidbit on that for, on my end. I'm, not, I, I'm, not, I'm going to be completely honest. He, I saw him at Survivor Series on his debut and he freaked me out from day one. And I was, I, I was pulled in, but I was a little skittish on – the character right off the bat. And then a little bit later on down the line, the Paul bear didn't help the situation at all. <laughs> oh no. So He's a creepy guy for sure. <laughs> let me ask you this jumbo <laughs> off the topic. Just, a, just another silly breakfast question here on the E's and B's podcast. If you could eat breakfast with any wrestler, who would it be? Any wrestler? Oh man. I would like to sit down uh, with Arn Anderson have a have a good bite to eat with him because uh he's uh, uh another big inspiration of mine i got a a brief moment to chat with him but it was like 60 seconds so it wasn't enough to really really dive in but i would like to sit down have breakfast with him and really pick his brain awesome he's one of my favorites too i'm an old school kind of wcw uh favorite wrestler or favorite brand from my childhood and I love the Four Horsemen. I love Darn Anderson. I still do to this day. Him and Tolia, I think it's great that they're still active in the sport. Like you said, spread the knowledge. So staying close to that topic, uh, who who's your biggest role model or hero? Um, that ooh, my biggest can that be just anyone? It, it could be them? yeah yeah. We could like I said, it could be we'll scramble the egg. Let's say uh, it could be out of wrestling or it could be in wrestling. Whatever whatever motivates you, you know. Um, my biggest role model at the moment, because it changes, you know, as I learn new sure. things, discover new people, but at the moment, it's a gentleman, uh, by the name of Napoleon Hill. He was an author and he just really resonates with me. Uh, the books I've read from him, uh, to, to the point where it's really motivated me to, to stay on track with, with whatever I'm doing in life. Uh, there's, you know, been many moments, I'm sure many can, can relate to this of wanting to quit of, of reaching a moment where you think doubt, you know, you, you think that maybe this is too much for me, maybe this is, you know, not the right path for me. But um, his words, and you know, his books is very motivational, has kept me in line as far as the goals that I've set for myself. Amazing, amazing stuff, bud. I'm glad to hear stuff like that. Like I say, we like to scramble things up and definitely reach outside the box sometimes here on the E's and B's. And I love hearing stuff like that because, you know, you don't necessarily, uh, to be a wrestler, always have to get your inspirations from just straight wrestling things. And that's awesome to hear that. Uh, good, good stuff there, Jumbo. Hey, let's, let's keep it rolling here, bud. If you could be a pro in any other sport, what would it be? Pro in any other sport, uh, I definitely would have uh, loved to, to to been a pro in football. You know, awesome. I played football uh, growing up. Uh, I did also play soccer, and I enjoyed it a lot. Although okay. I felt okay. that maybe maybe I would I don't want to be a pro at that at that <laughs> level. You know, uh, props to them. You know, a lot sure, of running, yeah, a lot of running. But football, sure. uh, when I first played it, um, fell in love with it. I love the impact. You know, impact sports, uh, and I you know. Kind of wish I would have uh, put a little bit more effort into that and seen where that took me, you know. Okay, okay. Yeah, definitely. Definitely one of my favorite sports to watch other than wrestling. Um, I never was very good in, in football myself, but I'm a diehard Dolphins fan. So definitely 
can feel where you're coming from. 49ers here, yeah. And I'm sorry about that two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> hey, keeping it up here, guys, on the E's and B's with Jumbo Zamore. Hey, buddy, what's your favorite Thanksgiving food? My favorite Thanksgiving food? Oh, man. <laughs> all of it? Can I say all of it? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely me. I hear, I hear that. It's so hard to pick just one. But let's yeah. say this. All right. You can eat one thing before your next match, and that's it. From the Thanksgiving Thanksgiving table, what's it gonna be? Uh, I'd probably eat stuffing. I mean, as much as I would love to say turkey, uh, I you know I can't ever eat enough stuffing for sure. <laughs> that's that's pretty good. All right, not what I expected. I was gonna say probably stu- uh, turkey or something down that path, but yeah, yeah, okay. Mm. Hey, what's your favorite thing to do in the holidays? Uh, my favorite thing to do is uh, really spend time with my family because I feel. Uh, I, I don't have that enough of these days, just busy, you know, trying to get my career uh, uh, going. M- uh, my wife as well, uh, you know, busy with her work. Uh, so I just feel like we've kind of been distant um, the last several years, just getting our life going. So I would, you know, my favorite time during the holidays when we all have time to sit down and breathe is just spending time with them, catching up with them. Absolutely. Same here. Your family, man, t- heart to heart. That's, you know, I love it. You know, especially, I don't know, I can def- we could definitely tell here on the E's and B's that you're doing the same thing as most at home, you know, the homeschooling. So we've got a little bit of even more extra time with the kids, which has been great on my end, yeah. I'm sure, on yours as well. Absolutely. I know, I know you're probably like me too. There's a few times when we wish school was back, but hey, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, save, that for another, we'll <laughs> save that for another day, right? Yeah. Hey, yeah, keeping it moving as we're winding down, Jumbo, I've got just a handful of questions to ask you before I get you out of here, buddy. And uh, some of my will admit are going to be a, uh, Probably a little tough for you to answer, but I got faith okay. in you. Good. <laughs> what is your favorite moment to date in your career right now? My favorite moment to date would have to be um, when we did the rumble at the Loud House uh, at the Pepsi Center here in Denver. Uh, getting to perform in front of uh, was about 6,000 plus people. Uh, that was definitely the greatest moment in my career so far. Uh, I'd never, you know, in a million years that I would, I have expected this early in my career uh, to be in front of uh, that many people and to be able to entertain that many people. Uh, so it was the greatest feeling ever. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I agree. I, I, I think anytime when you're around that many people, well, I've talked with it with several of my uh, interviewees and, you know, just the feeling of that, or feeling an emotion of that many people, you know, you just you can't describe the the feeling yeah. you get coming out as a wrestler. I, I explained it as a child, seeing the, you know, the wrestler wrestling and wrestlers going to the, the stage back then, how crazy it was. I can only imagine, you know, yeah. being on your end. Uh, it's uh, it's addicting once you feel it. <laughs> you want more and more of it. <laughs> uh, yes, definitely. And, and, and we, we know for sure things are going to, we're going to, are going to get better and the fans are going to come back more and more. I just know it. So yes, we just got to keep, keep pushing forward. Hey, a couple, couple more silly ones here for you. If you had a superpower, what would it be? Um, it would probably be teleportation. Um, okay. Um, you know, I grew up walking most of my life everywhere that now I have this thing where I, if I could choose not to walk somewhere, I would do it. So if I had teleportation, you know, maybe it's a lazy power, but I would probably use it to get around very easily. Because I, right. I, I wouldn't disagree with you at all. Yeah, all right, cool. Yeah. All right, so teleport- teleportation for Jumbo. I can't blame him, uh, you know, saving the energy and uh, dominating, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, how about this one? If there was a movie about Jumbo, what would the name be? It would have. It would just be larger than life. Okay, larger uh, than life. Really... Um, because uh, I felt in my life, I've uh, you know, and I think everybody goes through their own, uh, sh- you know, fair share of troubles. Sure. Uh, yeah, but yeah. I felt that I've gone through uh, enough troubles that I could that that I've overcome. That I would name my movie larger than life. I've overcome, the, you know, the struggles of life. Got you. Awesome. I I definitely back you on that. And I'm 100% understand where you're coming from. So cool. 
All right, Jumbo, we're winding things down on the E's and B's. I got two more left for you, and then I'll get you out of here. <laughs> I'm going to ask you the little bit touchy one, and then we'll go away with uh, maybe a, a good thought from you. Tell us, what's your th- what are you thankful for in wrestling? Um, what I'm most thankful for is uh, having um, – the the amount of knowledge and resources uh that allow us you know that are newer in the in the industry to to be able to flourish and to be able to do better um that's something that you know i've had other you know careers um where i felt that wasn't a you know like as prominent where you have a a big a source of uh, knowledge that you can pull from in all directions. And the thing about wrestling is there's really no one right answer to many things. And so being able to go through to different people, uh, different walks of life, different careers and, and, and pick their brains and get information from them. I think that is uh, the most invaluable thing that, that we have and that I'm most appreciated for, because uh, without that, I don't think I would be uh, as far as I am uh, as I am now awesome I, and i totally agree yeah uh you know it keeps growing day by day you know we, as we've seen here in this tough time now yes we, we we got pushed back on certain things but we've we've grown and we've adapted and kept moving forward and, and i think that we're going to continue to do that here in the in the local region and, and growing and I, I totally agree with everything you say there man it's just you can't get enough of it and People like you, there needs to be more of, you know, that has the mind and heart that you have because I, I believe in my heart, Jumbo, that you're going to go a lot farther than people imagine here in this, in this wrestling industry. As long as you put your work in, you know, that's Absolutely. all it takes. I mean, let's be honest. Look at Abaddon, you know. She, yeah, she wasn't sure. around very long, and she's, you know, the sky's the limit for her. And like I told Absolutely. Lilith and everybody else that's came on the E's and B's, you know, as long as you have the dedication, you never know. That's what I'm here for. I'm going to try to push you guys as much as I can. Who's, who's to say how far it goes, but why not? You know, I yeah. so, appreciate what you, what you're doing, man. <laughs> absolutely. All right, Jumbo. Last question I'm going to pop you with today here on the E's and B's buddy. If you could be, or if you could wrestle anywhere, where would it be? And who would you wrestle with? If I could wrestle anywhere, that would have to be Japan. And as far as anyone, um, oh man, <laughs> um, I would definitely like to wrestle a Braun Strowman, you know, um, I know a lot of people might be surprised by the answer. But I, I, I feel that um, I personally feel that I am a titan on that level. And I would like to always face the biggest, the baddest, whatever is perceived as, as, as the top of the, 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 the pyramid of strength. So Braun Strowman in my eyes, you know, even Brock Lesnar, they're, they're, they're at the top of that pyramid of, of power and I would like to face them. And I, and I say Japan because Japan's crowd is the most stubborn when it comes to uh, what, they, what they get into. And yes. so they're, you really have to, to, to in, dig huh? deep and draw them in. And so I want that kind of crowd. That'll really confirm with me that I'm doing a good job. Man, that's that's an awesome answer. Let me throw let me throw one at you. How about this? Because I never thought of the Japan style. That's a and your for your character. That's amazing. But let's just say this is possible. We know it's not. But you versus Bruiser Brody, Japan. Yeah, I would oh, love. Oh. oh, that would have been a dream come true. There sure. you go. Right. Yeah. Well, as we wind as we wind things down here, Jumbo. Once again, I I it's an honor. It's been a pleasure to have you on the show. I'm so thankful here in the month of November. Like I said, you got plenty of big things coming. Let's turn things around. I got faith in you, buddy. But before I let you go, is there anything you got for Eddie B or anything you'd like to ask me? Um, uh, nothing that I would like to ask you, but I would like to tell your, uh, you know, your, your followers, your listeners to continue to, to listen in, to tune into your show uh, because you have uh, more surprises, more people that are going to be on your show that, that you never know where they're going to be in life. You never know the faces, the people he brings on his show, uh, where they're going to be in a couple of years. 
like we talked about Abaddon. So tune in and catch people at the beginnings, the, the, the blossomings of their career, because it's an amazing journey to go on with. I appreciate that so much, Jumbo. Like I said, we're going to catch up here, here really soon again. Keep pushing forward, my friend. It's been an honor and a pleasure, buddy. All right, Thank man. Till next time. Once again, everybody, larger than life, Jumbo Zamore. Thank you. <clears throat>